Okay, the recording is started. Let's call the meeting to order at 6.01. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? All right, hearing none. Is there any public comment? Hearing none. So let's move on to our meeting minutes. Jeremy, Matt sent them out. Yeah. But last week, was it, Jeremy? Uh, no, I just sent them out <laughs> this afternoon. Um, I did get comments from, I believe, Alan. And let me see if I got comments from anyone else. Um, John Morris said they were fine. And I think that is it. So I guess, is there any objection to... Um, to approving the minutes at this time uh, with um, minor corrections by Alan. Not for me. Okay, motion to approve the July 11th, 2023 meeting minutes as drafted with um, minor grammatical corrections. Second. Who, who seconded that? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. It's Chuck. Chuck, Chuck thanks, Chuck. All right, so we have a second by Chuck. Are there any opposed to the motion? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion passes. Thank you very much. Uh, the treasurer's report, is that, Ray, are you going to do that? Is no. Um, Lori Beth going to do it? Lori Beth's going to do it. Lori Beth's going to okay. do it. Okay, oh, I am on two different meetings, so I'm trying to try to bounce between you. Um, in both of them as treasurers, there are no final um, reconciliation for the bank, for the uh, um, financials for the treasurer's report. Nothing has changed um, until we get that reconciliation back. And, and when do you expect that? That's because now the, the, the banks now close out on the 30th. Is that correct? And it takes Bonnie some time? Yes, and I do know her office is very busy, uh, but I expect to have it by the end of the week. Okay. Okay, so then we can we can bring that for the executive committee at that time. Yes. Okay. Ray, is there anything you you'd like to add to that no. then? No. Okay. So let's let's move on to our. Uh, Audit finalization, uh, we sent out the final audit and also sent out the, the letter ba basically accepting the findings and under, understanding and accepting the, accepting the findings of the audit. Um, and I'm looking for, I suspect here, a motion to send out that letter to, to uh, allow us to move forward and close out our our audit. And I'm I had one here and I'm not finding it. So quick question for you, Jerry. You yes. said that you sent the audit and or you sent the letter and then you are now looking for approval to send the letter. By the first sent, did you mean that you sent it to the governing board for review and you're now looking for approval from the governing board to send it to the auditor is that what i'm hearing we, we, yes so that so this closes this closes out the uh this closes out the the audit by sending this letter it finalizes everything and that's a a very important step that that we need to that that we need to make um in order to move forward with our uh, in order to move forward with our financing, um, as well as needing to show the federal government that we that we've you know met all of their met all of their requirements. So this this letter is is extremely important, and it was approved by the executive committee on the I guess that would have been the 18th of July, um, but at that time it was felt that this should be moved to the governing board for the final approval. So they're in the 18 July minutes. Uh, Alan, go ahead, sir. Yeah, 
Jeremy, what we're doing is we're ask we're we're moving for approval of the management letter that's been developed, and that will go okay. to the auditor who then sends it in with the audit. So we're not that's approving right. the, the audit. We're really approving the management letter that goes with the audit. And the audit, by the right. way, is formally called the called the financial report for some reason. But but if you look at the title page, that's what they call it. It's a little bit confusing. Yeah, it it, it has many different names, and colloquially, it's known as the single audit because it's a very specific type of audit. If you spend more than seven hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars of federal grant funds, which we had in twenty twenty two, and we will do this all over again in twenty twenty three. So let me let me do the uh, a motion. Let me bring a motion. Whereas Nathan Weschler has completed the audit of CV Fiber for twenty twenty two. Whereas CV Fiber is required to obtain governing, broad, governing board approval of the 2022 audit, it is moved that the governing board accept the 22 CV Fiber audit. Second. Seconded by Jeremy. Are there any opposed to the motion? Any abstentions? All right, hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. This was uh, quite an experience for many of us. <laughs> Someone was trying to say something, Jerry. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, David hey, Jerry, David, I, I did not. Hear, yeah, I didn't get a copy of that report, Jerry. I, I, I don't know how to vote on it because I didn't get a copy of it. Okay, I, so I well, let's, let's have David. John got it. Let's have David down as um, abstaining. And David, do we not have your email address in the governing board general email? Well, I am the alternate for Marsfield. Maybe I just went to John and not me, but I, I just didn't get it. So um, okay, we're, we're, gonna, we're going gonna to talk. make sure we're going to make sure. First of all, I'll send it to you. But second, we'll make sure that you are on the distribution because as an alternate, alternate you should be. Thank you, Chuck. I see. I see you in the chat. Okay. Um, and just to double check, David, you are checking your CV Fiber email address, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. Just I know it's a silly question. Just wanted to make sure. Okay. Any additional discussion on this matter? Let, let's roll into the financial and grant support update, and I'm going to ask Ray to uh, to update us all on that. So the uh, the vote was concluded then on the last on the audit, right? Okay, just wanted to make sure. Yes, yes, no, no, there was there was there were no. Uh, yes. I, I think I was on snooze. Yep. So I just wanted to make sure that that. I uh, might have, that, I might have been on snooze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, financial and grant support. Uh, what I would say to you is that. Um, we're we're working through our ARPA funds uh, through this through this year and um, hoping to retain some of those funds into 2024 to keep the lights on. Uh, at the same time, we recognize at this point there's going to be a gap between our grants. That is between the ARPA grants and when we may receive B grants. And the belief right now is for the state as far as CUDs getting money, it will probably be in Q1 of 2025. So we should not expect funds in 2024. Um, there will be a competition um, uh, for B grant money that we will participate in next year. Uh, but the um, uh, and the and the VCBB will make awards that'll go back to the NTIA to um, to make sure that everything was done in accordance with the rules. And then they'll tell the VCBB that they can start issuing money and some of the money will flow. So uh, we may see that. In the interim, we're looking at the possibility of grants and um, and loans. We have retained NRTC to work with us on uh, grants um, and possibly a loan. And we're trying to define projects for that, for those grants and loans uh, through the ReConnect program, the ReConnect notice of funding opportunity will probably be issued in September for what they call reconnect five and we're hopeful that um, we will be in a position that shortly after that nofo is dropped 
that we will be making a submission for one of the, for one or more projects that might be defined. At the same time, we're working with PFM, our municipal advisor, with regard to the possibility of uh, qualifying for some loans. And we've been actively engaged on a regular basis now with providing them information. The first part of that is to, for them to develop a financial model of us so that they have a story that they can tell to banks and others that might be interested in lending us money. Um, I would love to be able to uh, to get a get a loan for like ten million dollars, um, but I'm not sure that we're going to have the revenue stream that would make the uh, make the banks or other interested parties um, sit up and take notice and want to give us as much as ten million dollars. And so uh, we could be looking at something in the five million dollar um, plus or minus range. Uh, so we'll see where that, how that goes. What I would say to you about this is that later this month, the beginning, as if there's much time in this, okay, there is three weeks, I guess. But later this month at the beginning of September, PFM will be sending out an RFI to parties that they're aware of that are typically interested in these kinds of things to see if, what the interest might be and if they want to continue to listen to uh, as we develop our story. Uh, with the hope that sometime in Q4, uh, so we're talking October, November, December, that we might begin um, to actually enter into some negotiations with a with a party, which might give us some money in the beginning in Q1 of 2024. And so those are the things that are moving right now. Um, happy to take any questions at this point. Yeah, Ray and David, uh, what what is the uh, prep work needed for Reconnect Five uh, what's to the, prepare us for the, the submittal? What's the what's the prep work? Yeah, so um, uh, yeah, every every Reconnect, and this is the fifth one, right? Every Reconnect has its own requirements, and so you don't know what those requirements are until the notice of funding opportunity comes out. What we are doing is we're we are. Um, assuming that the requirements for uh, five are going to be the same as requirements for four in the sense that all the data that's required will be the same will be the same and the application format will be the same we may find out downstream a little bit that uh, some of that work needs to be updated because five is different so what we do understand about five which is different from the from four is they're reverting back to reconnect three in which what they were funding was those with 25 three or less as opposed to the most recent one which was uh, 100 over 20. and so um, what that means is there'll be fewer what they call um, uh, uh, financial service areas project financial service areas, PFSAs, there'll be fewer of those PFSAs that you will, um, that we'll be able to apply for. Those PFSAs will look nothing like our DAs that you've seen in our maps that we've designed for. Yep. It will look like a gerrymandered um, um, congressional district, um, actually. David, was there more to follow up? No, I just I just know there's a lot of work and there's a short amount of time to respond to those. Yeah, is so there anything it, it, that could be done. Yes. So what we're doing is NRTC is helping us with the definition of the project. They typically have worked in the past with CTC on who actually prepares the application material. It's an online application uh, document. Uh, so they can't use CTC anymore, so they'll be look they're looking for and will come back to us with a with a second party. Uh, for that. Uh, Jerry, do you want to add something? Yeah, the one thing I, I just would like to remind the governing board is that all of these long-term financing decisions are governing board decisions. So we are we're 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 doing our our due diligence at the at at the you know the worker bee level and then as we come up through the committees we come to the eventually to the governing board. So this is a uh, a slow moving train, but it's but it's moving. Um, Thank you. Any additional discussion on financial and grant support? 
All right, hearing none, let's move over to our construction update and I see a hand up. somebody raised their hand. David went. Yeah. Go ahead, David. Um, yeah, hi. Um, so just to clarify, Ray, are we talking about um, loans from banks or are we talking about issuing debt? Yeah, so um, actually we're looking at the whole continuum, uh, which could, in, it, and we've been most recently talking about uh, construction loan, bank loan, uh, short-term loan, as opposed to a uh, long-term 10, 20 year debt. Um, but I think we might also be considering uh, uh, private placement, you know, promissory notes. So that we're gonna be looking at all of those things. And, and what I would say about the uh, private placement promissory notes is that uh, EC Fiber over, over a number of years raised $7 million in that fashion. Uh, so that it it could be a market that we might want to follow up on if our other avenues are kind of closed off to us. So, and, and that $7 million was that they issued 600 different offerings and there were 475 people in their district that actually took advantage of that, uh, those offerings. And all those people were paid off. I mean, it, 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 um, you know, they subsequently were able to get bonds, et cetera, et cetera, and retire all of those promissory notes. Great, thanks. Thank you, Ray. Uh, any additional discussion? Okay, not seeing any hands. So let's move on to our construction update and out outlook. Janiel, we haven't heard from you yet today. Hello. I'm mute. St still don't hear from you. <laughs> so despite a lot of flooding, the, the Eustis crews are still out there working and worked through most of the storms. We lost a couple crews only. Um, and they have, as of last week, and our numbers come out tomorrow, so we will have higher numbers tomorrow, but we have 72 miles of strand, 50 miles of fiber, and 719 addresses as of the end of last week when we got our numbers, or Wednesday of last week when we got our numbers. We have, um, and, and I think Lucas could provide us additional color to this, but we have confirmed our meet me point with Velco that connects the fiber to the greater network and to Waitsfield. Um, and we're working on the connection at the OLT site at the, um, at the Kent Corners um, Callus substation. And we're working on pulling the power to that substation as well so that we can power up um, CLO 1 and 2. Uh, Lucas, do you want to add something to that? Uh, yeah, I mean, just said I'm, I'm hoping to hear more about the power um, any minute, any day. Um, I have several emails out about it at the moment, so hopefully we can have more of an update on that in the very near future um, because that's the last step we need to um, engage Waitsfield Telecom to begin their work, even though we, we do have a couple of smaller components still at the site needed um, for splicing and testing. Um, Wadesfield can still get the ball rolling, powering up the equipment as soon as we have power. So that'll be a big step. Yeah, so we're actively constructing in four distribution areas now. Um, and the, the crews are looking to complete these four construction areas, most likely by the end of the year. Um, they're working on splicing now. Um, so very active. Um, do you want to, Janelle, you want to talk about friendlies and uh, yeah, sure. when people could be brought online, et cetera? Yeah, so so we are working with friendlies in the CLO1 and CLO2 distribution areas, and that is a handful of testers of the network. The testers of the network are testing the technical network to make sure the fiber actually works. They're also testing the, the crowd fiber subscriber database. That is how folks connect using our online uh, subscriber database that connects to a platform called crowd fiber. And they're, and they're also testing, the third thing they're testing is the billing system through Waitsfield. Waitsfield as our operator will be managing the billing. And so our friendlies will be testing the billing as well. So those three things. Excellent. Um, any uh, other questions or discussion about our construction update and the outlook for where we're David? headed? David? Yeah, I just want to make sure everybody on the board knows that every by every Friday we have updated 
all the locations that fiber has gone by. I mean, it's on our website and uh, we've made it known, but I don't know how many people actually go to it and see it. Yeah, you can actually you can put your address in and see if fiber has been passed has passed your address, and there are dots on the map that show where the the connections have or where the um, passings have been made, and you can also see a map on our website that shows what distribution area you're in when you put your address in. Excellent. And I see that David Lawrence has posted that in the chat, the link to that in the chat. Thank you both, Davids. Shall we uh, move on to installations and drops guidelines? Since we've, well, now that we're constructing, we actually have to uh, have to get folks connected, right? So, so we, there, there, there are two components to getting somebody connected. There's the, there's the, the, the component that is. From, from what we call the MST, and then there is the component that actually goes to the house. And we have arrangements with Waitsfield Telecom in that when we pay an installation fee to Waitsfield, we pay Waitsfield to do the installations, right? We are, we are covering what, whatever that distance is from the MST, the longer distance is, is being paid for by CV Fiber as a whole. And it's leaving the much smaller distance that goes to the to the house most of the time, leaving that much smaller distance as the responsibility of the responsibility of the homeowner, the subscriber. And what we're doing now is we have a $99 installation fee to the customer and a dollar a foot for anything longer than 400 feet. And to give sense of feel for how this is working out, even though this is a small sample. This is exactly the way we had anticipated it was going to work out. Uh, out, of, out of 30 addresses that have already been surveyed by Waitsfield's engineer, which is what's required. You need, you need an engineer survey to determine exactly which points are which and where to measure from. So out of 30, only two have to pay more than the $99 fee. So only two are farther than 400 feet out of 30 in installation inspections. One of them was only for 50 feet and the other one was for 235 feet. But also I think what's telling is that the, the, the average distance that goes to that 400 foot calculation out of 30, including the long ones, is only 158 feet. So it's, it's, it's going to prove out that it's going to be a very small amount of people that, that need to pay the, uh, the additional fee. So I, I just wanted to let folks know as an update that you know this is how it's working out. It's working out very well. We're, we're very pleased that Waitsfield is working with us on this and that they're keeping track of this of this data and, and sharing it with us so that we can we can make sure that we're doing everything appropriately as far as the customer is <laughs> concerned and as far as Waitsfield Telecom is, is concerned. So this is this seems to be working out very well. Um, and I'll I'll take any questions if there are any. I just wanted to to let the governing board know how this is playing out as as projected. Uh, Jeremy, go ahead. I see your hand. Uh, not I'll, a question. On, not a question on this. But after this discussion, um, if you could call on me, please. Yes, sir. I will. That's so that I'll I'll let out. I'll go to Alan then. Jerry, can, can you give us an idea of? what the area these 30 hookups uh, are in. Is this way back in the woods? Is it on a main road? Is it, um, are they close to each other? Are they far apart from each other? Do you have any information like that? David Healy, I'm gonna defer to you because yeah. this is in your backyard. Yeah, I don't, I mean, they're all in CLO1. Um, and there's a, I think there's a pretty big variety of um, along the road and then back in the woods. And I think out of the 30, 25% had conduit. It was a big number. <laughs> yeah, that was out of the That's 100. That's amazing. That's the 100 plus number. 100 plus, working. okay. Yeah, that was 100 and something. No, actually, it was almost 200 
um, and out of the in 25% of the 200 surveyed uh, required had required conduit. So 25%, you might be working with that number. Let's see if it goes up or down. And some of the conduit they're finding is is available to to run the fiber through, which yeah, for right. me was surprising. So that, that's 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 good to know that that's happening as well. Uh, so when 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 somebody has an existing conduit, how are they charged if there is a fee be, beyond ninety nine dollars, or is it assumed that they pay everything because they're doing an underground connection? It's still a dollar a foot. They get the 400 After feet. After the 400 feet. After right. the 400 yeah. feet. Right. But we don't pay the conduit. We do not pay for the conduit, no. The customer the pays for the conduit. And, and we're finding the existing conduit is, it, you know, sometimes is good for us. So that's 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 great. So CV, <laughs> so, um, so Wakefield The Telecom, fiber that goes in the wire is covered, Alan, but the conduit right. itself and, is not. So Got it. if someone was was going to install their own conduit, they would need to get the conduit that meets our specs. They would need to have it buried appropriately, and they would need to install a pull cable or a pull cord in right. the fibers so that we can pull fiber through it. Right. And then in all cases, Waitsfield Champlain comes by and does the actual pull through the conduit for the connection. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. 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 Waitsfield okay. doesn't want anybody else touching the fiber. They they because they want it. They want full responsibility and knowledge of of how that fiber is being handled. Gotcha. Thanks. Okay. So before we go off topic with Jeremy, well, actually, there... I do have a I do have a question on this topic. Oh, go ahead, please. I'm sorry, <laughs> getting confusing here. Um. So I I know that we don't pay or that we are not going to pay for the conduit, but are we going to suggest contractors or um, have fees, you know, like, like say, for example, I don't have conduit. If I wanted CV fiber to install conduit, could I say pay 10 bucks a foot and have CV fiber install that? Janiel, you want to respond to that? I think I, that's why your hand is up. That's why my hand is up, yes. I put in the chat box, um, I must have read your mind, Jeremy. I put in the chat box the, the conduit specs that also has our contractors. Um, that we, we actually did vet them through our contractor MBI. We, we checked to make sure that they use um, certain equipment and have a certain insurances. However, we are not, we're not saying that these are the only contractors you can use. You can certainly use anyone you like. Um, that list is on the link that I posted in the chat, including Perfect. digging okay. the trench, including digging the trench yourself. <laughs> Knock yourself out. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Give me a Absolutely. pickaxe. <laughs> Jeremy, then is there another question that you have? Uh, yeah, or more more of a a note. Um, I noted uh, there's a new person on the call, Amanda Gustin, who I believe. Or, I apologize if I mispronounced your name, but I believe this is a new delegate from Barry City. Is that yeah. correct? Yes, that's correct. Hi, Amanda. And Hello. Yep, that's me. You pronounced my name correctly. And uh, apologies that I couldn't be on earlier. I got sucked into a flood recovery phone call that took up the first 15 minutes. Uh, very understandable. Barry got uh, it. it Barry, yeah. Good luck. Um, well, anyways, welcome. And uh yeah if you have any questions feel free to ask and jump in uh we're we're a friendly group group of people siobhan i see yeah. your hand is up go ahead please hey, i just wanted to ask are we getting the letters from the towns or cities when they're appointing delegates because if we're not we're supposed to be getting letters from them i i know and that's something that i need to do um i need to email all of the town clerks and redo that and that is a a clerk thing that i have um that i need to follow up on blacker i know i'm the worst <laughs> i i nominate just, siobhan Paracone, uh, as clerk. <laughs> wait a minute okay i just i just was double checking on that because i had heard that we were getting the, the letters so i just want to make sure that we get all of the t's crossed i'm done 
Thanks, Siobhan. All right. Thank you, Siobhan. Uh, can we move on to website and marketing update? And Chuck, would you like to start us off, please? Go ahead and hand it off to Janil to start us off. Okay. Thank you, Janil, so, for the hot seat. Yeah. Yeah. So um, CrowdFiber is the is the platform that we use to subscribe um, uh, customers. So when you go onto our website and you type in your address to see if you, you can get service, it, it kicks over to the CrowdFiber um, website. CrowdFiber is actually a subsidiary of NRTC, and they're working with um, Waitsfield directly. They're also working with Maple Broadband, and they're working with NEK Broadband, and now we're working with them as well. So what we're doing with um, the 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 website is trying to iron out some of the the issues with it. So we are we are um, we're subscribing people. We're signing people up successfully, but there are some glitches still. So we're working on that. Um, if you want a, a broader marketing update, um, we we also are. Um, getting ready to hire a marketing manager or a or a um, community relations manager. And we, uh, just to touch on a few other things that we're doing, we've been sending out postcards to um, the subscribers to sign up as well as email emails to uh, through MailChimp to get um, surveys. So those are some of the, the, the things that we're working on. So, so this this is an uh, item for which action is expected with regard to a developer. Does somebody want to talk about what the need is? I've got a motion prepared. I can actually talk about the need as well, and and um, either Linda or Chuck can jump in after I talk about the need. But uh, Crowd Fiber is a sensitive and unique subscription database, and um, there are there's a need for additional coding um, to make it ready to get subscribers. Um, it, it, it runs slowly and uh, there are a lot of, there are a lot of, I wanna say they're bugs. There are things that we must iron out to make a friendly user experience so that people can sign up. Uh, the, the information gathered on the CrowdFiber database is very important. This is uh, this is all of our customer information, and it gets sh it got it gets sent to Waitsfield so that Waitsfield knows who the customers are, where to do the surveys, um, and so it's an extremely important piece. And CrowdFiber doesn't have the personnel support to make the changes we need that will make a comfortable user experience for our customers. So we have done some we have done some outsourcing of this. We worked with Upwork for a while. Um, to fix some of the spaghetti code that was good. That's a term I learned that um, some messy code that we had to get fixed. Um, and now we are about ready to launch and realizing that a lot of our customers are having a hard time signing up or there are duplicate signups. And so we we need to have some initial crowd fiber support as we launch um, so that we can actually sign people up. Tom, I see you have your hand up. Yeah, um, I've gotten a report on um, someone having a fairly long um, time period between when they signed up and when they got a um, engineer to come out and do the survey. And I was curious, what should be a, a expectation on that? I myself signed up about two weeks ago and have not heard anything yet. So I just wanted to make sure I'm telling people <laughs> the right numbers. So yeah. Um, it Waitsfield will go out and do a handful of surveys at a time um, so that they are going out and, and looking at neighbors and seeing, for instance, there might be multiple folks who sign up and you can have uh, a connection might look a little bit different depending on how many people sign up in a particular area. So Waitsfield is going out there uh, to do many surveys at a time rather than getting a getting a request for a survey and immediately going out and doing that one survey they're collecting them so they're doing them um, they're doing them every couple of weeks they are doing them in groups so if you sign up in the early part of when they're going out there you might not get a survey or a call for a survey for a couple of weeks whereas if you're toward the end of that um, the end of that group then you might get a, a, a call sooner so it, it's not like they're calling every single person every time they sign up but they're letting some uh, sign signups collect and then doing and them and mass do we have a um, some sort of time limit on that so that we don't end up having subscribers sitting indefinitely 
So it's going to be faster as we start launching because they're pretty serious about doing surveys now um, uh, because we're getting so close to the point where we're going to be operating or serving people. So uh, it's generally been a couple of weeks. Uh, it's generally been a couple of weeks. We didn't put an actual time limit on it, but we are encouraging um, them to act more quickly because we have them they're adding up and as we send out more marketing they're they're adding up even more we we actually have time limits in our contract for these things but they really haven't kicked in yet because we re, we haven't we don't have a service to offer yet but there actually are time limits tom in our in in our contract with waitsfield and i i know ray put up his hand probably to to say just that i i don't have those figures in front of me to know what they are, but they're, they're, they're pretty quick uh, going to your comment about not wanting potential subscribers to wait too long. Ray, you want so, to follow up? Well, just, uh, yeah, a couple of things. One is that there is an initial phase um, uh, under which the time constraint is somewhat flexible when we start kicking off stuff, but then there's a regular um, period of time the number of days uh, escapes me at the moment, but they are incentivized to get people online because that's when they get paid. And they get paid for the installation, they get paid for the, um, uh, as an ISP, for example, for out of every, um, every fee. Um, the other part is that they've done 200 surveys. And the experience is that after you do the survey, not everybody takes service. Consequently, there are a lot of surveys that they're going to spend a lot of time doing them and getting nothing. We're not paying them anything. The, 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 uh, the customer is not paying them anything. So all of this is at risk that we're doing now. Now, they've done 200 surveys, so that's a, that's a darn lot at risk. Only the friendlies, have, you know, and there's a, there's a bunch of others who have, who have committed. But none, nonetheless, it's not certain. So there's a, somewhat of a delay in the hesitancy there until somebody is actually um, not committed. Um, and I see that Linda wants to uh, modify my remarks. Go ahead, Linda. Until you, until you commit for a particular high-speed internet package, they will not do a site survey. Okay, so people need to go on and make sure that they have gone through the shopping cart page of the website and actually selected their package. At that time, they will get a site survey and get a true price for installation, the packages, the extras that they want. And at that time, they can make a decision to go with the service or not. Alma, let's go. Let's bring it back around to you. Yeah, that doesn't seem to be the um, situation in this case, that where a it seems like the shopping cart was correctly gone through. Um, I would just add that obviously we need to see how things roll out. We're in very early stages. I understand all of that, um, but if it is going to be some amount of time, we might want to just do a a friendly email or something that says, you know, we haven't forgotten you, just to make sure that they're still bought into Absolutely. the service. Okay, point taken there. Thank you. Uh, Jeremy, your hand is up. Yeah, um, and I'm really tired. I apologize. And whatever it was that I wanted to say blew out of my head. It had to do with one of Ray's comments, and um, I apologize. It couldn't have been that important. I think you were going to ask Ray to make the motion that he put in the chat. <laughs> Yeah, Thanks, right. Can Jeremy. you please make that I motion? Mean, I'm happy to do that for you. <laughs> Whereas CV Fiber is utilizing Crowd Fiber as a subscriber database and is getting ready to launch services. And whereas it's critical to improve Crowd Fiber's database in order to manage subscription subscriber intakes and provide related essential technical service support as needed to launch services. And whereas time is of the essence in commencing this work, is move the governing board approve the hiring of developer or developers with experience, including Crowd Fiber, CSS, and HTML, an initial budget of ten thousand dollars, and thereafter such additional budget as the executive committee shall authorize. Second. Second. Seconded by Siobhan. Thank you, Siobhan. Um, 
Jeremy, are, are you on topic or or? Uh, that's residual. That's that's residual. Okay, Chuck, go ahead, sir. I would like to suggest a friendly amendment, and that is in the uh, second paragraph where it says uh, improve CrowdFiber's database. I would like to suggest we re uh, refine that to say to improve the CrowdFiber user experience because we can't really actually touch their database or their setup or anything like that. All we can do is improve the UI that the, use, the customer gets to see. Um, and there is a technical distinction between the two if you know, people are tracking at that level of detail. Hey, no, hey, I accept the friendly amendment. Siobhan, do you accept that for your second? And and, and just one more point, and that would be that would be this, and yes. that is that this is typically these actions are typically done in the executive committee. They're not typically brought to the governing board because these are third party consultants that the that the that the governing board is given the authority to the executive board to, to executive committee to do under its charter. Uh, however, time is of the essence, and that is why that sentence is in there, because we want to start working with people this week. Um, the executive committee will meet next week, and as any other additional monies might be needed, uh, the executive committee will consider those things. And so the, that's the end of my input. Chuck, is that a residual, or do you want to add more, something more? Nothing. Okay. David, your hand is up. David Mannix. Can you come rush? Yeah, Ray, is this, is this part of that marketing budget that was approved in the June meeting, or is this a new budget, this 10000 and additional is needed? No, this is, this is the, comes out of our consulting funds. This isn't a, this isn't a marketing okay. uh, expenditure. This will be an ongoing operational expenditure, like forever, that we'll be doing tweaks. <clears throat> maintenance and tweaks to our uh, subscriber uh, experience. Okay, so we have a friendly amendment accepted by Ray who made the motion. Siobhan, you seconded. Are you good with the Oh yeah, yeah. I, I've been saying yes, but I was muted. Ah, okay, yes. very good. Linda, Linda, go ahead, please. Just one more comment that this position is going to be doing the go live uh, on the crowd fiber end of it. So if you want uh, zones, people signing up in new zones as the construction continues, we need somebody that will move the go live in CrowdFiber into the status we, that we want. Don't ask. Very good, thank you. Any, any other discussion on the matter? Obviously it's very important. All right, hearing none then let's, let's, let's uh, well, uh, David, you put your hand back up. Go ahead, sir. Oh, no, sorry. Accidental accidental oh. hand raising there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so are there any opposed to the motion? Are there any abstentions? All right, hearing none, the motion passes. Thank you. This is this is good, and as Ray said, we needed to step this up, and that's why we didn't want to wait for next week's um, executive committee. Jeremy, go ahead, sir. Yeah. Um, so I noticed that there's a person on the call with a phone number ending in seven one, and just wanted to know if this person would like to be uh, recognized in the minutes, uh, or if you'd rather remain anonymous. Anonymous is fine. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, David Healy, I see your hand is up. Yes, I just wanted to mention, and I think I sent out a notice, that the other marketing thing we did in the last two weeks is we did you know, two workshops in Calais. We had 45 people come to them, and we had a bump in subscriptions after that. So the idea of putting in more workshops in, in Worcester and Middlesex and Woodbury has come up. We've put the Orca video is now online, and we've got it on our website. So if you have anybody who's interested in <clears throat> in seeing that workshop without having to attend one, it's all there. The The nice part about the workshop, the second workshop, the work of taped, was that Waitsfield was at it and did a great job of showing how the stuff gets attached to your house, what's done inside your house. And they cover a lot of territory that I am not versed in doing. So it was quite useful. 
Thank you, David. That's that's uh, that takes a lot of effort to pull those off. So who who flashed the uh, the uh, crowd fiber dashboard? Linda flashed the crowd <laughs> fiber, and 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 the point of that we took we talked about it today in the operations uh, committee uh, meeting. The the point of that is that we can see when um, uh, front porch forum notices are out that there are people who come to the website. And then there are some people who actually subscribe to sign up and in, in for service. And we saw this especially when, when David did his two event presentations last week, last week, two weeks ago, yeah. last week. And uh, we saw people subscribe, uh, order service. Uh, so these things are very helpful. And of course, uh, we've been sending postcards out um, fairly regularly and those also create a bump in terms of people coming to check to see whether their addresses are, are being served uh, and some people are actually signing up. So um, bravo to everyone that's involved with that because it's a tremendous amount of work, and but it's meaningful and it has an impact. The bumps, the bumps that I showed are, uh, the first bump is from the first set of postcards that we had. And the second bump I believe is from David's workshop. Thank here, you. Here. Jeremy, your hand is up. Um, I apologize if I misheard you, Ray, but did you say that there is an operations and planning meeting today? No, no Thursday. We, there was a, um, yeah, we had an operations meeting today. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. The, yeah. The, yeah. The, the, it was a, okay, but not, not, not the operations. Meeting. No, no, it's okay. I just no. wanted to make sure that that it's the that field. It's the that... Waitsfield committee meeting. It's, it's that group, Waitsfield. It's waste. It's not a. Com uh, it's not a committee. Yeah. Working group. So it's working group. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for derailing, but just wanted to make sure that I didn't miss anything because yeah. you know. <laughs> David Healy, would you take us into the next item on the agenda? Oh yeah. So, uh, for the last whatever the last number of months, I've been the alternate delegate to Vicuda, and so Janiel is the delegate, and I have been the alternate and it i would have to say that i'd like to pass on that um, um membership to uh an authority to another member of the uh the board who has been attending almost every vicuda meeting anyway and so my motion is to nominate uh ray pelletier to be the alternate delegate from cv fiber to vicuda second who, who was that second? Was that Chuck? Chuck, that was me. Yep. Okay, thank you. Second by Chuck. Any discussion here other than thank you, David, for all that time? All right. Are there any opposed to the motion? Hearing none. Any abstentions? <clears throat> Hearing none. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you, David and Ray. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Ray. Uh, the next item is our delegate participation rule. And there was some read ahead material sent out uh, a few days ago. And there was there was also some uh, refined, revised, edited, and thank you for all that 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 helped correct the language there. Uh, that was sent out this evening by Alan. Uh, I'm going to hand this over now to Alan so that he can walk us through uh, this rule. Go ahead, Alan, please. Okay, so let me start off with a motion that I put in the chat um, a few moments ago. I move that the governing board take the delegate participation rule, aka community representative participation rule, off the table and that the proposed rule be adopted with non-substantial revisions suggested during the rather long one-year committee review process. Second. Seconded by Jeremy. So let, Excellent. So let me explain what's happened with this, with this rule because it really has been sitting out there for, for a year. It was at last year's August meeting that we first discussed uh, putting in our procedures and rules, this one was to be a rule, that uh, we wanted to 
make sure that community representatives were attending meetings, and if they weren't, that we had a process by which we would tell the people who uh, choose and nominate the delegates, which is the select board or city council, <laughs> that they really had to help us so their community was represented in CV5 or discussions. We had a discussion last August about the wording of the, the uh, proposal at that time for the rule that was being developed, and the board wanted it to be revised some more, it suggested a few things, and so it went back to the policy committee. The policy committee at its September meeting uh, took that up, and there were some revisions that uh, Ray, Ray suggested, I believe, and we then passed that back on to the governing board because the theory was that the governing board was now in charge since it was it, it was taken off the table of what the next steps would be. It did go to the executive committee, which in October, late September or October, approved the version that we had developed at the policy committee. And then it was asked to be put on the agenda for the November board meeting. November of last year, if you look back at any of our meeting minutes, you'll recognize as a very busy month because we were just about getting ready to begin to start uh, building our network. The, the construction, if you remember, actually began in December. So in November, we really had our minds on a whole bunch of other things other than uh, delegate participation uh, rules. And it just never got on the uh, board agenda and it didn't get on uh, for a number of months. And finally, somebody this summer, uh, I think it was Jerry, recognize that we had this rule that was hanging out there it is still on the it's still on the table of the governing board so what we have to do tonight is to first of all vote to take the proposed rule off the table and then we'll consider it i'll point out the additions corrections uh, revisions that were done they really are non-substantial this isn't all that complicated but it's been a very long process and um, we all apologize that it's worked this way, but I think the end result is gonna be a pretty good rule that will give us some, some help in making sure we have participation from more communities. Are there, any, are there any questions either about the process so far or does someone wanna to move to take this off the table? Could I ask a question? It, it looks like it looks like the motion has um, encompasses both taking it off the table and adopting the rule. It is is the is the motion then the first part going to be uh, move that we take it off the table? We vote on that and then we move the rule. No, I, the discussion you can I can move that something be adopted, but the discussion is 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 part of that package. You don't need to say we we I move to discuss this. When you move that something be done, it's put on the table for discussion, and then there's a vote made on that. So I see no need to separate them, Ray. Very good. Uh, any additional discussion or clarifications then before we vote? And now you're voting to take it off the table, and then we're gonna talk about the changes that, that have been made so people understand how this has happened. Okay, we had a motion and your motion, Alan, and a second by Jeremy Matt. Right. So we're voting I, I, on that I'm motion. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused because that seemed to be exactly Ray's question was, are we voting to take it off the table? But then the motion was to take it off the table and to adopt. So if we're just voting to take it off the table, do we need to then a friendly amend this motion to be a two part thing where first we take it off the table or no I, I i think you're making this more difficult than it has to be what you're voting right now is to take it off the table 
so that you can begin a discussion that started a year ago, as, as I said, and that the discussion is whether or not to adopt the proposed rule that is before you. So we don't, there, there's, the, the discussion is so we are into voting taking it off the effectively, table. Effectively, we are voting to adopt this now. So no, you're effectively voting, first? no, you're effectively voting to consider the adoption of the. Okay, so uh, Alan has made a motion. Alan has made a motion to table it. I second that motion. Okay. No, we, we, we can't because Alan already made a motion to the, to take the delegate take it off the table the rule off the table and that the proposed rule be adopted. And then we will have it if if we do that. I mean, it could be voted down, Jeremy. You know, people for some reason may vote down to keep it on the table if they want to stop it. Oh. But if we want okay, to consider so we're gonna it, adopt and then revise. Yeah, that's right. Okay, I, I I'm sorry, I, I I missed that. I'm I'm quite tired, and it just didn't make sense in my. No, brain. no, it's perfectly fine, I'm clear and now. It, it's why it's always discouraged to put something no, Chuck, on the table. No, Chuck, we can't. Okay, so we have a motion, we have a second, and we have a vote. Are there any opposed to the untabling? <laughs> Hearing none, are are there any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion passes. Thank you. Now okay. we have something that is on the table. Okay, so I just want to run through quickly what the revisions have been since this came out of the policy committee and then the executive committee last year. They really are non-substantial. Uh, you were sent both a tracked copy uh, you, you you were sent the original and then, and then a track copy. And then this evening, I sent you a clean copy that doesn't show what the revisions are. Instead, they're incorporated into the document. So I don't know which is the easiest for you to use, but I wanted you to see the final version. And that's why I sent something out this evening by email. But basically, here are what the changes are. In rule, there, there's... We call this a general rule, but then there are five different, I'm sorry, six different sections of it. In the first section, which began delegates are responsible in the case of their absence, um, there was originally community in front of delegates and community was struck because it didn't seem necessary. In the third rule, the same thing happened. Uh, community was struck in front of delegates and added in front of the word clerk was the CV fiber clerk. And this really uh, was necessary to distinguish if we're talking about a town's clerk or we're talking about the clerk for CV fiber. So rule number three, which originally said the clerk will notify community delegates and alternates who have not participated, it now says the CV fiber clerk will notify delegates and alternates who have not participated. The same thing happens in rule number four, CV fiber is added before a clerk to specify it's the CV fiber clerk that does the notification of the town and not the town's clerk. Same thing in number five, CV fiber is put in front of clerk, so it specifies it's the CV fiber clerk and not the town clerk. And then, there are three sections within section five, and instead of having them separated by commas, they're now separated by semicolons in an effort to make them more readable. Communities was originally spelled as a plural noun with an apostrophe after that. That's been changed to be appropriately and correctly the community, in other words, the one community, the town that's been, that's taking action. So the community, which used to be communities apostrophe is now community apostrophe S. And the representatives, which used to be S apostrophe is now apostrophe S. Those are all pretty standard grammatical errors that had to be corrected. And then in the sentence, in number five, 
the section of this that says that CV Fiber suggests the community CV Fiber representative's position has become vacant effectively was added as a way to show that we're not saying it is vacant, but is it is effectively vacant because we cannot, as CV Fiber, determine when a position appointed by the town is vacant. A town has got to do that, but we can say it is for all for all uh, for all for all uh, circumstances. It really is effectively vacant. And then we have um, that CV fiber requests in order to make it chummy that we would like to work with the select board. We originally had, and that the select board or council uh, should consider appointing somebody instead of being so directed. Directive, we said CV Fiber requests the select board of city council. Um, and then instead of saying, should to consider a point, we changed it to consider appointing a new delegate and one or more alternates. So all this is really just, just some twisted uh, language that needed to be straightened out. And I think if you look at the final copy, it's much smoother. And then in number six, the very last item, again, CV Fiber governing was put in front of board chair. So people know we're talking about the CV Fiber board and not, not a town board uh, itself. And uh, CV Fiber board chair, government will request a meeting with the town select board chair, da, 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 or to appear at a meeting of a town select board or city council when its representatives have missed five and then or more was added, consecutive CV Fiber board meetings to discuss the town's or city's representatives' participation in CV Fiber. So there's nothing substantial in these changes that, that we could find, and we believe that the final copy that we presented, the clean one that I sent out uh, and, that, and that you have, is the one that should be adopted. Alan, from a process perspective, do we need a motion now to accept to to accept these, or do we already have a motion? We have a motion. I made a motion that we uh, that we take it off the table and that we adopt it. So we now have the discussion whether we should adopt it, and now we should decide whether or not um, we should decide the motion to 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 adopt it. Okay, so we're we're I'm, we're go ahead, Jeremy. No, I, I, I'm completely confused because this this was exactly my question before about voting to take it off the table and why Alan's motion said to adopt, and then we voted on it to adopt it, but then we discussed the changes afterwards. It seems like we've already voted on adopting it. Um, I, I don't. Know. But anyways, never mind. Siobhan, can you clarify? I'll try. When it. <sighs> The discussion of this was put on the table. It, we voted to put it on the table. So we had to vote to take it back off the table, but there has to be a motion in play for us to discuss it. So the motion was to continue the discussion of the motion to approve this thing that we had on the table for a year. We already had this motion on the table, so the motion Alan made was to untable the existing motion that was already in discussion at the last the last time we talked about this. So now we need to vote on that motion to approve these suggested changes. The Thank vote you. was to take it off the table. This is to vote on the motion. Does anybody have comments about it? Well, Ray has his hand up, so let's see what Ray's comment is. My, my comment is this, and that is that however confusing this journey has been um, to get to this point and tonight, we are at the right spot in terms of, are we going to adopt this rule or not? And that's what we're going to vote on. Thank you. Are we ready for the vote then? Is the discussion? 
I don't see any hands up to continue discussion. So let's let's vote. Are there? Oh, wait, Tom Fisher has his hand. No, that's a no, vote. Jerry. Okay. Yes, Jerry, sir. what motion are we voting on? The, there's the motion that Alan put on the in the chat and the one that I seconded. We've already voted on. You vote. We voted on the motion to untable. We are now voting on the motion to approve the proposed policy. The That's change. what the vote sure. is. And the text of that motion is the one that Alan pasted in chat. I'm really sorry that my brain is just not working right oh, now, and I'm not getting this. I'm sorry. Yes. It, it, it's the problem is you have to think of a year ago when we had something on the table, there was a motion to adopt something that is still that that's still alive. And the thing okay. you have to do. Uh, OK, OK, OK. So for the minutes, is the motion from a year ago what you pasted into chat via I move that the governing board adopt blah, blah, blah. Or is it just I? I frankly don't know what that motion was. Um, I, okay, so I, we, we could go back so and find need to it. But it, okay, so it was it, it, if, if it we're was okay with voting on the motion, why don't we just vote on that vote on that motion, and then I can go back and paste that motion into the minutes today, so that people know it was actually voted on. Uh, is that okay with people? Chuck, your hand is up. You're being patient. Let, let's have you add something to this, please. I think the language in the motion that Alan put forward that is tripping Jeremy and me and maybe some others up is uh, and that the proposed rule be adopted. And like that's what we moved and seconded and voted on, but we weren't actually adopting it. We were moving to untable it. And so uh, I put a little bit of a language tweak into the chat that I think might clarify this. Uh, if I don't know if we need to remove it or whatever, but that it, instead of saying that it be adopted, adopted that the proposed rule has moved re-enter discussion with the non-substantial revision suggested during the committee review process, et cetera. Anyway, I, I, I'm willing to go however people, like I'm okay with, the, <clears throat> with what has been read uh, today. And so like, I, I think we can just go for it and bring it forward. Okay, so let's let's have a vote. And those that have problems with it can either say thumbs down or they can abstain. <laughs> so now we are voting on the motion from August, correct? The one that Alan uh, posted or that uh, Tom posted in the chat uh, to approve the attendance rule as drafted. With with the uh, with the with modifications as as yes. mentioned with by Alan tonight. Right. Okay. As drafted and re and revised. <laughs> Are there any okay. opposed to the motion? Please. Hearing none. <laughs> any abstentions? Right. Yay! The, the motion passes. Thank you, thank Yay. you, everybody, for un unwrapping <laughs> this. The, these procedures can be can be quite burdensome, but it's. Uh, it's important to have some kind of guidelines as we play this bumper pool <laughs> game here. Yeah, so so thank you very much. I, I, putting something on the table really almost always ends up in a mess. And in the legislature, when you put something on the table, the joke is that you take it to the morgue and you never see it again. Uh, it's very kind of unusual to take something off the table uh, in 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 many organizations, especially state legislatures. So that's I'm not surprised that we've uh, gotten tangled up in this. But I think the end product is really good, and I thank everybody who worked on this. And I think we've uh, we've made a significant uh, uh, step forward in trying to make sure that we have a full slate of delegates at our meetings. Thank you, Alan. Uh, I'm going to move to Janiel now for our. Community Relations Manager, and to the extent that we can keep this out of executive session, uh, I would be most pleased. If we need to, we need to, but I don't want to just jump into executive session. Agreed. So, Janine, and would you start us off? 
Sure, I'll give an overview of why we need this position and what we've done so far to get here. So this position is community relations manager. This person will be a full-time employee of CV Fiber and will be responsible for making a marketing plan and executing that marketing plan, working closely with our partners and committees and the board, and I will be the direct supervisor of this position. So this person will be um, implementing our marketing and in so far as we are launching and need to provide consistent messaging to our subscribers and to align with our partners. I so what we so what we did is we uh, we created a hiring group, and that hiring group reviewed um, resumes. I did the initial scan of the resumes to make sure they were local and qualified, and then uh, the hiring group reviewed those. We came down to four that we wanted to interview. We telephone screened six. We, we uh, I telephone screened six. We, as a group, uh, did Zoom interviews or Teams interviews of four of those candidates. We came up with two top ones, one very top one and then one um, secondary. And we brought that to the communications committee. The communications committee reviewed the resumes, um, agreed with a hiring group's uh, top recommendation and um, put that as an approval in uh, at, at communications committee. Then it went to executive committee. Executive committee reviewed the hiring group's uh, recommendation to the communications committee that approved it. And yes, we're in a public entity. Um, and so then uh, the, pro the process is, is lengthy. Um, but I'm going through this to let you know all of the steps that we, we have taken to get here. So executive committee last week approved the, uh, the recommendation of hiring this candidate, which was the top rep recommendation of hiring group and then communications committee. Now it comes from executive committee to the governing board for hiring because at CV Fiber, the governing board is the hiring um, entity. And I believe Chuck Burt has a motion that we might be interested in. Yes. Um, would it be appropriate to put forward the motion now, or do people want more, more information? Motion. The motion. motion. We, can we can always discuss once the motion is out there, Chuck. OK. Um, whereas CB Fiber is in need of a full-time community relations manager to develop and implement marketing plan communication strategies with the public, including potential subscribers, and whereas CB Fiber published a job description community relations manager to Indeed and LinkedIn and on the CB Fiber website, and whereas several applications were received and vetted and qualified local candidates were reviewed by a hiring group put together by the executive director, and Whereas candidates were telephone screened and four candidates were ultimately interviewed by the hiring group and two candidates were chosen as primary and secondary. And whereas the communications committee and executive committee both passed motions to approve the hiring group's top choice candidate subject to governing board approval, it is moved that the governing board approve the hiring group's choice of community relations manager candidate and approves that the executive director move forward with the issuance of an offer letter and subject to reference and background checks and agreement on terms of employment that CV Fiber enter into an employer relationship with this candidate. Second. Seconded by Linda, emphatically. Is there any additional discussion? Jeremy. You're muted. You're on mute, Jeremy. Just noticed that. Uh, I just wanted to point out that um, a question I'd asked during the executive committee was whether the, this was a unanimous recommendation from the hiring committee, and it is a unanimous recommendation, uh, was my understanding. Yes. Thank as, you for as that. Well, as well as by the communications committee and the executive committee, which are the, the committees that are appropriately making the recommendation to the board as yes. opposed to the hiring group. It's the committees that are making those recommendations. True, but it, it, the reason that I made that, that I asked my question <laughs> yep. was because yep. people had the most direct contact and knowledge of all the applicants. Un understood, point taken, thank you. Any additional discussion? All right, hearing none there. Are there any opposed to the motion? 
Hearing none, any abstentions? The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. I know this Neil. is a big relief for folks. Janiel, when is she starting? 28th. August 28th. <laughs> Not soon enough. <laughs> Not soon enough. All right. All right. Well, subject to successful negotiations and all the rest of that <laughs> legal language. <laughs> but knock on wood. <laughs> so very good. Thank you. We have run through our agenda. And it's uh, 7.15. Uh, un unless there's any objections, I'm getting ready to adjourn the meeting. No objections. No objections. I'm going back to my campground. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Siobhan. Bye, Siobhan. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks Jerry, for your patience Jerry, you, uh, with my misunderstanding. Jerry and Linda, can you hang on for two minutes after, please? I can, but I'm going to turn off the, ca the uh, recording at this okay. time. Good. So I'm turning off the recording now, or I'm trying to. Meeting adjourned at 716.